If you're rated between 1,000 and 1,600, there's a very good chance you've seen this move a lot. This is the start of what's called the fried liver attack. There's all kinds of videos on YouTube about why this is such an amazing opening for white, and that's why you see it all the time. Everybody is trying to play the fried liver attack. But today I'm going to show you a trap that you can play in response to this that over 300,000 people have fallen for. It's going to get you a lot of quick wins, but the nice thing is even if they don't fall for the trap, it's still a solid opening that leaves you in a good position. Let's go ahead and see how you can punish this move. All right, so e4, e5, the most common response is knight to f3, knight to c6, and bishop to c4. This is the Italian game, and you really have two main options, knight to f6 and bishop to c5. I personally prefer the two knights defense, knight to f6, and if that's what you play, and you're rated between 1,000 and 1,600, there's a very, very high probability that your opponent is going to play the move knight to g5. It's threatening a fork on f7. And it's setting up to go into the fried liver attack. Now, if you're unfamiliar with that, if you play the move d5, what white is hoping for is that after they take, you'll recapture here, and they will sacrifice their knight on f7, trying to lure your king out. They'll play queen to f3 check, forking these guys. The only way you can defend is if you go up here, and you end up with your king in the center of the board, and they get to attack you, and it's a lot of fun for white and not a lot of fun for black. So I don't recommend that you play that. Although I do have a video on the channel showing that you can play it if you want. But today we're going to be looking at a different response. So when they play knight to g5, we're still playing d5. Everybody's going to take you with the pawn. That's really the only move here for white. But now instead of recapturing with your knight here, you're going to play the surprising move knight to d4. Now this is not a very common move. Okay, the, the common line here, if you're not going to go for the fried liver, is knight to a5. So this probably some of your opponents have seen before. But knight to d4, it's a very rare move, and it has an incredible idea behind it. So I want to flip the board for a second here to white's perspective. And the most common move, okay, between 1,000 and 1,600 rated players in this position is the move d6. Now, why would they play this move? Well, it's really quite obvious. They... You know, the whole game, they've been going for this attack on F7. The pawn's in their way, so they think, well, I'll just push it forward, let black capture it somehow, and then I'll have my follow-up fork. Okay, so that's kind of the idea. That's why you see this move all the time. So what do we do against this? Well, we play the move queen takes d6. Now, you might be thinking, Nelson, we're still getting forked. Like, did we miss this? What are we doing, right? And this is exactly what we are hoping our opponents will do. Now... There's really two moves that have been played here with any kind of regularity, knight takes and bishop takes. If they take with the bishop, this is the better option for white, but it's still okay for us. And I'm going to show you a little trap here if they do this one as well. So king to e7, we move, and they have to save their bishop. Because if they don't move their bishop, let's just say they castle, what we're going to do is play the move h6, and now when they move the knight, their bishop is no longer defended. And we simply can take their you know, their bishop for free. So that's kind of the problem for white. So they have to move this bishop. And going back to b3 is really the only safe square for them. And when they do that, we simply take it. And we kick the knight away. And watch what happens to this knight. There's really not a lot of options. Because our knight's controlling here. Bishop's controlling here. This are, these are all controlled. So they have to go back to f3. We attack it again. And most players at this point are going to say, well, I don't want to move my knight. I'll pin your pawn so that I don't have to move it. But we just slide our king over. And guess what? Now they have to move their knight. And if you look carefully, the knight can't go here. It can't go here. It can't go here. It can't go here or here because of our queen. It can't go here because of our pawn. It only has two options. And they're both bad for white. If it goes here, guess what? G5 traps the knight. The knight is gone. You can't go here. You can't go here because our bishop. And you can't go here because our king. Goodbye to the knight. Okay. So if they don't want to lose their knight, they have to go back to G1. But that's a terrible move. Because now they can't castle. Look at their pieces. They're all in the back rank. And we can simply just keep up the pressure. Bishop to g4 attacks the queen. And if they try to block, guess what? We take it. Doesn't matter how they recapture. Bam. Rook to e1. We pin the king and the queen. You can see how much fun this is for us, right? So even if, okay, even if they take with the bishop, going back to this position, after we take with the queen, even if they do this, we're in good shape. Bring the king up. Trade the knight for the bishop. And just go attack the knight. That's all you have to remember. All right. Now, most people are not going to do that. They're going to take with the knight. And they're going to go for the fork. I mean, they spent all this time setting it up, right? Sacrificing the pawn. 
this is what they're going to do. And that's exactly what we want because we have the move queen to c6. And a lot of people think, oh, we're attacking the bishop, but I'm going to get a rook. Okay, it's not a big deal. And they're going to take your rook. Again, they've put all this time and effort into this. They're kind of committed to this plan, right? So they take the rook, but we don't take the bishop. We have bigger fish to fry. Queen takes g2, which is attacking the rook with a check. Now, how do they save the rook? There's only one move, rook to f1. And now what do we do? Queen to e4, check, and the king cannot move. White has a choice between giving up their queen, which nobody's going to want to do, or blocking with the bishop. But if they go here, do you see how we're going to follow up? Well, that's correct. Knight to f3 is checkmate. That's a smothered checkmate. The bishop can't take because the queen is pinning it, and the game is over in just 10 moves. Incredible, right? And like I said, this is pretty common, okay? Going back here, 300,000 people, um, sorry, after this move, 300,000 people have played the move d6, okay? Going for this. So um, that's the basic trap, okay? We take with the queen, they fork us, we go queen c6, they take here, we take here, we go back with the check, and we win the game like this. Now, some of you are thinking, but Nelson, what if I'm playing a, a smart opponent who doesn't fall for the trap? Well, what do I do? All right, let's take a look. So let's say um, they take, you play knight to d4, and they don't play d6. The other move that some people will, actually the most common second move is c3. They say, okay, he's putting his knight there, I'm just going to attack it with my pawn. And what we are going to do here is play the move b5. So we're counterattacking the bishop so that when they take our knight, we take their bishop. Okay, so usually you're going to get this trade. And then most players with white are going to notice that they can just take this pawn and get both pawns in the center. So they're going to take. And now we are going to take d5. And by the way, I'm going to put a PGN uh, in the description. You can copy and paste that into like Lee Chess or Chess.com. So you don't have to try to like memorize all this stuff. It's going to be down there for you. But we're going to take with the queen. And yes, our knight is hanging. But watch what happens when they take. We take their knight. So it was just a trade. And you might think, oh, but they're going to take here. But watch what happens. We take back. And it might look like our position is, is kind of open, like we're missing some pawns, we got some bad pawn structure, but actually, white is the one in trouble because we have a thread here, and they're not developed. They haven't developed a single piece. We already have our bishop ready to go. This bishop is about to come out. The queen's in a good active place. And so watch what happens. Most players will castle to defend this, and you simply play bishop b7, and we're threatening checkmate here. And it's not an easy checkmate to deal with. There's a lot of ways that white can go wrong here. Um, for example, if they play g3, they've totally weakened these squares long term. And we simply castle. And just take a moment and look at how many squares we are controlling. Look at this. This. Look at this bishop. Look at our rook. Controlling all of these. Look at our queen. Controlling this and this and this and this and this. I mean, we're like controlling almost the entire board. And look at white's pieces. Nothing. Okay, this is great. You've got ideas of bringing the queen here to go for a checkmate. You can push this pawn up too and trade here to open up the rook for a checkmate. You can also just bring the rook over and play in the center. So many good moves, okay? The other option is that they could play f3, trying to shut down your bishop like this, but then you come in with bishop to d4 check, forces the king over, rook to g8, piling on, threatening checkmate. Yes, there's a little check, but we don't care. Just slide the king to d7. You're totally safe. This rook's coming over here to e1, uh, to e8. You've got the checkmate threats. You've got both bishops laser beaming at the king. Fantastic. Okay. So that's just kind of an example. Even if they don't fall for your trap, it's not a bad line. Okay. And so I highly recommend this. Trust me when I say if you're rated between 1,000 and 1,600, you are going to see this from time to time. And if you are ready for it, play d5. And when they take, you hop the knight into d4, review the lines that we just covered, and you are going to get a lot of quick wins. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, thanks for watching. Stay sharp, play smart, and take care.